name is Ruby Carnes. I am an instructor with Route 66 CDL and Apprenticeship. Um, I'm going to do a pre-trip inspection on this vehicle. Uh, it will be very thorough. At some point, I will be stopping to explain parts. We're, we're going to uh, learn the wording and the verbiage and how we um, do the pre-trip for the DOT. Okay? So let's get started with the front of the vehicle. We're going to look at the clearance lights, which are up here. They are securely mounted, not cracked broken. None are missing, they're amber in color. Normally we'd be standing out back here, so the next thing we're going to do is the undercarriage and make sure there's no leaks. Then we're going to approach the truck. The DOT likes touchy-feely, so we're going to touch the headlights and turn signals, and we're going to say they are securely mounted, not cracked or broken, none are missing, and the turn signals are amber in color. We're going to do our fender mirrors on both sides. We're going to make sure they are securely mounted, not cracked or broken, not missing, and, and that they're there. The next thing we're going to do is raise the hood. I'm going to ask Kelly to come up here and raise the hood. The proper way to raise the hood. Be sure you support the hood all the way down. You don't want to let it fall down. It is made of fiberglass and it won't break. Now, we're going to proceed down this side of the vehicle. So we're going to come back here to the exhaust system. This is our exhaust pipe muffler, if you want to call it that. It is securely mounted, not cracked, broken, no missing nuts or bolts. There's no soot around the, the uh, connectors that would indicate a leak. And you're going to check this system all the way to the turbo uh, back up here at the motor. And as you go, you're going to look underneath there, and you're going to keep checking. It is okay to use a pointer stick at the DOT test site. This round thing right here is your turbo, okay? You're gonna make sure that all your clamps are in place and that there's no leaks. Next thing we're gonna do is go to the wipers. We're gonna check our wipers to make sure they are securely mounted, not cracked, broken, no missing nuts or bolts. They're not, the blades are not worn or frayed um, and they have proper tension. They get to the windshield properly. The next thing we're gonna do is go to the radiator. The radiator is securely mounted, not cracked, broken, no missing nuts and bolts. Since it has fluid, we have to say not leaking. Hoses, air lines, anything with water, air, or oil, you must say not leaking. So then we're going to go to our upper and lower hoses. They are securely mounted, not cracked, broken, no missing nuts or bolts. We're going to go to the alternator. Securely mounted, not cracked, broken, no missing nuts or bolts. Appears to be working properly. Our wires to the alternator, not cracked, broken, worn, or frayed, and there's no bare wires. We're going to check our belts, they're not cracked, broken, worn, or frayed. No more than three quarters inch pull between the pulleys. Please do not go through our trucks yanking on these belts. 25 people a day go through yanking on belts and it does some damage. So we're not going to do that. Just give it a little push, that's all you need to do. Then we're going to go down here to the water pump area. It is securely mounted, not cracked, broken, no missing nuts or bolts. And the lines that run to the water pump are not cracked, broken, worn, or frayed, and there's no leaking. Since it has water, we have to say no leaking. Then we're going to do the frame. It is straight, not bent, no unauthorized holes, no unauthorized welds. Now that's all that you talk about on this side of the pre-trip inspection for the DOT test, for your CDL test. In the real world, of course, you would go ahead and do all your suspension and your brake system and your wheels and rims and everything. But because of time constraints, this is all we're going to talk about on this side. Now we're ready to go around to the other side. <laughs> okay. Once again, we're going to start at the top with the wipers. Securely mounted, not cracked, broken, worn, afraid. We say the same thing as we say on the other side. They have proper tension. This is your coolant reservoir. Securely mounted, not cracked, broken, not leaking, has fluid in it, and the cap is secure. You can you need to check all your hoses again, not cracked, broken, worn, or frayed, not leaking. You want to go to your radiator on this side. Make sure it's secure, no missing nuts or bolts, not cracked, broken, or leaking. Now, the, the best way i found to do this is to stay next to the motor and work your way out. So go to the belts again on this side. Not cracked, broken, worn, or frayed, no more than three quarters inch play between the pulleys. 
Then we're going to go to the power steering pump. If you look at your reservoir, all these hoses run into the pump. You must talk about that. The pump is securely mounted, not cracked, broken, no missing nuts or bolts. It's not leaking. Follow your hoses, not cracked, broken, worn, or frayed, not leaking. To the reservoir, power steering reservoir, it is securely mounted, not cracked, broken, not leaking. The cap is in place and it's filled to the proper operating level. That's another thing. You do not physically check anything when you're doing the DOT test. In the real world, of course, you will check things. The oil levels, the fluid levels, and all that. But for the test, since we have a time constraint, we don't check those. Now I'm going to go back here next to the motor. This big block thing is our air compressor. It is securely mounted, not cracked or broken. No missing nuts or bolts, and of course not leaking since it has air. Then we have this reinforced hose right here. It's a big silver reinforced hose. This is the mother line on your truck. This hose carries all the air to all the air tanks, okay? So it's very important that you talk about it. Securely mounted, not cracked, broken, worn, or frayed. Not leaking. Now I'm going to come to my oil fill and my oil check. You will not physically check the oil at the DOT test. In the real world, of course, you will. Now I'm going to go to my frame. We must do the frame on both sides. It is straight, not bent, no unauthorized holes, no unauthorized welds. Do you see how I'm working my way out? Now I'm going to go to my steering arm or steering shaft. It's not bent. It is securely mounted. There's no missing nuts or bolts. Then it goes straight to the gear box, steering gear box. Secure, it looks like a box right here. Securely mounted, not cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, not leaking. Anything that's got a hose into it, you must say not leaking. Okay? And that covers that part. Now we're going to go to our suspension. We have our spring hangers and mounts, okay? There's a big mount here, and then back here in the back, clear back here, ugh, there it is, that thing back there, okay? That's also a hanger and mount, so you must say plural. Spring hangers and mounts are securely mounted, not cracked, broken, no missing nuts or bolts. Our springs are in alignment, there's none missing, and they are securely mounted. There's no unauthorized welds, the, the U-bolts, not are securely mounted, not cracked or broken, no unauthorized welds, and they have the nuts secure on the bottom. Then we have our shock absorber right here, just like the shock absorber in your car. It is securely mounted, not cracked or broken, it's not leaking. Shock absorbers have fluid in them, you have to say that. And there's no missing nuts or bolts. Now we have, we're going to our, finish our suspension. This section here is one, one of the things that you can say all together. This is a pitman arm, a drag link. Back in here, you have upper and lower knuckles. They're like bushings. And then you have a tie rod, this bar. <sighs> there it is. Right down here, that ties the whole front end together. So we have pitman arm, drag link, upper lower knuckle, and tie rod is securely mounted, not cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts. Then we have the crown nuts or castle nuts. They're right here. It's a castle nut with a cotter pin. There's one here, there's one back here, and there's another one inside, which we don't need to know that. We just need to know that they're there, okay? At this point, we're going to go to the brake system. We have a brake hose, okay? The hose itself, what do we say about hoses? Not cracked, broken, worn, or frayed, not leaking. Runs right into the brake chamber. Some people know this as a brake pod. That's acceptable for those of you that are mechanics. It doesn't matter what you say. As long as you get through to the DOT what you're talking about. They understand pod or chamber. It is securely mounted, not cracked or broken, not dented, not leaking. Then we have our slack adjuster, which is right here in the front. It is the thing that you learned in the manual that no more than one inch pull with the brakes released. But we're going to say this is our slack adjuster. There are no missing parts or pieces. And it has the cotter pin in place. And there is no more than one inch pull with the brakes released. Stop it. Stop it. This is our slack adjuster. I believe that's where we were at. Now we're going to go to the brake drum and the brake shoe. They're inside here. You do not have a good visual of them, but trust me, they're there. Okay? Your brake drum is securely mounted, not cracked or broken. No, miss, uh, no, no missing pieces. Your brake pad 
is at least a quarter of an inch on the pad. It's not cracked or broken. And there's no contaminants such as oil or grease that's going to cause a problem. So in here also, you're going to say that you have your inner wheel seal, which is not leaking. Now we're ready to move to the rims and the tires. Okay, the rims, inner and outer, both inner and outer. Not cracked, broken. No unauthorized welds. There's a good seal between the tire and the rim. We're going to go to the tire itself. All three sides of my tires. There's no, no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. The tread's worn evenly. There's at least four thirty seconds inch tread depth on these tires. A steer tire, you single tire, you must have four thirty seconds. Now we're working our way out. And I'm going to start right here with this outer hub seal. It is securely mounted, not cracked or broken. No missing nuts or bolts. And it has a cap on it, so we have to say that we it's filled to the proper operating level. And, we, and if they ask you, you tell them we would check that by sticking your finger in there and making sure there's oil. Okay? We have our lug nuts, which are these big nuts out here. They're not, uh, there's none missing. All are tight. There's no soot or uh, that would indicate uh, the, a loose one, and there's no bare threads. The valve stem, securely mounted. It's centered in the, in the uh, area it's supposed to be, and it's got the cap in place, and it's not leaking. Okay? Now we're ready to move on. That should take care of the front engine compartment. Okay? Now we're ready to move on to the side of the truck. We're going to look at the mirror and bracket. The mirror and bracket is securely mounted, not cracked or broken. No missing nuts or bolts. And the, the mirrors are not cracked or broken. And they're there. Do not stand down here on the ground and say the mirrors are adjusted for you. You cannot see if the mirrors are adjusted for you until you get in the truck. We're looking at the door itself. The door is has no damage. The inner and outer latches are working properly. We know that because the door opened. And the hinges are securely mounted, not cracked or broken. You want to give a little lift up on the door. There's no missing nuts or bolts. The nuts and bolts are in here. The weather stripping, inner and outer weather stripping is intact. Stop, stop for a second. Okay, on your pre-trip it says a striker. This thing right here is a door striker. The DOT, to my knowledge, doesn't require it, but then we, we can go ahead and put it in there. It doesn't take but a second. This is your strike. Now we have our grab rails right here. They are securely mounted, not cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts. Now we're going to go down here to the steps. They are securely mounted, not cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts. We can shut this door now. And they will support our weight. And we're ready to go to the fuel tank area. These are our fuel tanks. They are, don't say gas tanks, the DOT will know you're a rookie if you say gas tank. These are our fuel tanks. They are securely mounted, not cracked or broken. We have the saddle straps in place with no missing nuts or bolts, and there is a rubber seal underneath them that keeps the friction from the tanks. Then we have our fuel cap. You do not have to take the cap off, but if I can get it off, I will show you, okay, that there is a rubber seal in here. Sometimes the rubber seal is around here. If they ask you to remove it, then you remove it and you show them that the rubber seal is in place, it's tight, and the whole thing is not leaking, neither the cap nor the tank itself. Okay, that takes care of this area. Now, right behind here, we have an air tank and our air lines. We want to talk about these. The tank and lines are securely mounted, not cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts. The air lines and the tank are not leaking. Of course, they have air in them. We're going to check... We're going to move now back up here. We're going to check the side of our vehicle. There's no damage. The door is secure. This is our fairing. It's securely mounted and our truck broken. No missing nuts or bolts. Do not ever walk past a light without talking about it. This is our marker light. All the lights on this vehicle are marker lights. Do not worry about whether they're turn signals or what they are. They are marker lights, okay? This marker light is securely mounted and our truck broken amber in color. Now we're going to move to the back of the cab area. I want you to step up in there because you can get in there and I can play. Okay? Okay, we're looking at the overall condition of the back of our cab. It is maybe a little too close. Okay. okay, just shut it off. And we'll get there. I'm ready. Here we go. We're going to look at the back of our cab. No missing rivets, no damage. Our grab rail is securely mounted, not cracked or broken. No missing nuts or bolts. 
We have our utility light or work light. You can call it either one. It is clear in color. It cannot be red. I'm, I'm sorry, it cannot be blue. It has to be either clear or red because it's on the back of the vehicle. Clear or red in color, okay? Um, now we're going to go down here to our frame. We have to talk about the frame back here. It is the same thing as we set up there. It's straight, not bent, no unauthorized holes, no unauthorized welds. Now we're going to step in here and we're going to go to the drive shaft. The drive shaft is down in here. It has U-joints. On trucks, it's actually in two or some of them have three sections. But you need to say it's securely mounted, not cracker broken, no missing nuts or bolts. There's no debris in the U-joints. If you can take a picture back here, I don't know if we can. There's a U-joint right there. That is a U-joint. Looks like a big U. You don't want any rags or towels or plastic or anything tied up in there. These turn constantly when the vehicle's in motion and it could cause friction and cause a, a fire. Okay? While we're back here also, if you get this section of the vehicle, you will need to talk about the exhaust on this side of the vehicle as well. You will say the same thing you said on the other side. Okay? But sometimes the DOT breaks your test up into sections. So you may not have the passenger side of the engine compartment. So you will say the same thing, the exhaust is securely mounted, not crack or broken, no soot that would indicate a leak. <laughs> We're going to go to the battery boxes. They're right here underneath the catwalk. This is your battery box. Inside here is the batteries. Once again, you do not open this up and check the batteries. You just tell them what you would do. My battery box is securely mounted, not crack or broken, no missing nuts or bolts. The batteries have no corrosion around the cables. Okay? on the connectors. Then we have our catwalk and steps. They are securely mounted, not cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, and they will support my weight. Don't forget to talk about <laughs> the air and electric lines back here at the back of the cab. These are securely mounted, not, not cracked or broken, worn or frayed. They're not. The airlines themselves are not tangled. They're not dangling. The fittings are tight on your air and elect and uh, uh, on your airlines you have fittings. You want to make sure that they're not leaking. On your electric line, you want to make sure it's securely plugged in. The lines themselves are not tangled. They're not dangling. There's no cracks in the air lines that would indicate that they've been pinched or that there's a leak. And your, air, your electric line has no bare wire showing. Okay? Now we're going to continue on. We're going to go back here and we're going to do one of the drive axles. Okay? This is where it gets... Okay, the drive axle itself. I elect to do this axle because of that fairing. I cannot get in there to do that axle. Normally, you will get down in here and squeeze in here, but for purposes of recording this, I'm not going to do that. You won't be able to see anything if I'm in there. So, what I'd like you to do is start from the inside. This is your air hose. We're doing the brake system. This is your air hose, just like on the brake, air hose and brake chamber on the steer axle. Say the same thing. Securely mounted, not cracked, broken, weren't afraid, not leaking. And then if you go back in here, you can see that it runs right into the brake chamber. Securely mounted, not cracked or broken, not dented, and not leaking. Now, on the back of the vehicle, the slack adjuster is behind the brake chamber. In the front, it's in the front. You will not actually be able to see it. You need to know it's there. It, you would need to crawl underneath this vehicle in order to get to that slack adjuster on the back. When we get back to the trailer, I'll show you a better view of the slack adjuster, but I want you to talk about it up here. Just point back in there and talk about it. The DOT needs to know that you know it's there and it needs to be checked. Okay, so our slack adjuster is securely mounted, not cracked or broken. Uh, no missing parts or pieces with the cotter pin in place. No more than one inch pull again with the brakes released. Now we're going to go to the brake drum and brake shoe. Stick your hand down inside there and just point to it or your stick and say the same thing. The brake drum not cracked or broken. The brake shoe not less than a quarter inch on the pad and there's no contaminants such as oil or grease. Now I want to tell you something about the brake system. <laughs> the brake system has the five parts. Okay, the air hose, the brake chamber, the slack adjuster, the drum, and the shoe. Those five parts stay the same on every axle. So it doesn't matter which axle you're on, the tractor or the trailer, you will say the same thing. 
part of this pre-trip is repetition, is repeat, repeat, repeat. But you have to do it. That's what you have to do. And really, it's not a bad thing. It gets you in the habit of doing everything. Now we're ready to do um, the suspension. Here's your spring hanger and mount on this end. On the end back here, back end behind here, at the other end of the spring is another one. Just say spring hangers and mounts, just like you did on the front. Securely mounted, not cracked, broken, no missing nuts or bolts. Your spring, same thing. There are securely mounted, not cracked or broken. This one just has a single spring. So you want to make sure it's not cracked or broken. Back in here behind the tire. Clear back in. I don't know if you can stick that camera up over the tire or not. I don't know. Clear back in here is, of course, a U-bolt. You have to have the U-bolt. It has to hold it together. Okay? Not, bit, not cracked or broken. No unauthorized welds with the nuts secure on the bottom. Now we're going to go to the back and we're going to finish the suspension because we have to come back here. We have our sock absorber right here, securely mounted, not cracked, broken, no missing nuts or bolts, not leaking. And this is our airbag. Because it's made of rubber, we can say no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, just like a tire. It's not leaking and it is securely mounted, no missing nuts or bolts. Okay? Now we're ready to do our, our wheels and rims on this axle. One thing I want to caution you when you're doing these dual axles, if you start with this axle, you must stay with this axle. You cannot jump up here to this airbag and shock absorber because that's on this axle. So you must stay every part you must do on this axle. So we're going to do our inner and outer rims on both tires. They're not bent, they're not cracked or broken, there's no unauthorized weld. We're going to do our inner and outer tires themselves. No abrasions, bulges, or cuts. The tread's worn evenly. Not less than 2 30 seconds inch of a tread depth. There's two tires is 2 30 seconds. One tire, 4 30 seconds. Okay? I'm going to do my inner seal. This is not leaking. I'm going to do my inner space. That's the space between the tires. I want no debris. Nothing that's going to come off and hit another vehicle or anything. Or tear my tires up. Um, my outer hub seal. This one does not have a cap, so you can't check the fluid level. This one is securely matted, not cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, and not leaking. There is a seal right in here that you have that, that will seal it. If it's leaking, you'll see all over the top, all over the rims. Mm -hmm. Then we have our lug nuts. They're all there. They're all tight. There's no soot that would indicate a leak, and no bare threads are showing. And we have our valve stems. Two tires, two valve stems. They're usually mounted across from each other. Here's one here. The other one is right there. Okay? So they're usually mounted across. They don't need to know that. They just need, I just want you to know that there is two of them and you must say valve stems. Same thing as in the front. They're centered in the, in where they're supposed to be. They're tight. They're not leaking and they do have a cap. Okay? Now, if I, I'm sure I've got everything on this axle, I will say, I would inspect, if it's okay with you, Mr. Examiner, or Miss Examiner, I would inspect this axle the same as this axle. Now we've covered both axles, okay? So we're finished with this part. Right, we're, we're ready to do the back of the cap, back of the tractor area. We're going to do our mud flap, or splash guard. Securely mounted, not cracked and broken, no missing nuts or bolts at least six inches off the ground with the DOT tape. Must have the DOT tape. Then when we crawl under here, we're going to say we have ample space between the landing gear and the tractor frame in order for this vehicle to turn properly. Okay? And then we're going to go under here and we're going to do the lights. You want to get under here? You want me to? Okay. We're going to do the lights on the back of the tractor. Okay? They are red in color, not cracked or broken, not missing. They serve four functions, flashers, or four ways, turn signals, brake lights, and the DOT calls running lights is what we call tail lights, okay? They do not care about the backup light. We don't have to talk about it. Just talk about these lights, the red lights that are working. While we're under here, we're going to go up in here, and we're going to begin the coupling section. We have our locking jaws, our securely latched around the kingpin. The kingpin's not been or damaged. We see no space between the upper and lower fifth wheel plates. The upper plate <laughs> is where the kingpin comes down from the bottom of the trailer. 
um, we can see that it's properly greased, okay? And at this point, we would then come out from under the vehicle and we'll go around to the side. And now, the best way to do this is to start at the bottom and work your way up. These bolts right here are mounting bolts. They mount the platform to the frame. So we want to make sure that our bolts are secure and tight and none are missing. Our platform right here is what holds the fifth wheel. Securely mounted, not crack or broken, no missing nuts or bolts. Then we have our pedestal. It's this triangular thing right here. This is the pedestal. It's what the fifth wheel itself sits on. Not cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts. We have our sliding rail. That's this rail right here with the holes in it. Securely mounted, not cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, and they're all tight. We have our locking pins. That's these little pins right here that lock the fifth wheel in place. They are there. They're there. That's all you really have to say. My lock, these are my locking pins, and they're in the lock position. This little round thing in behind here, and you can't see it, but in behind here is a safety pin. And what it does is it keeps the fifth wheel uh, plate, it's, uh, the fifth wheel a skid plate mounted to the pedestal. So it's there, it's secure, and the lock, and the locking, and the um, safety pin is in place. Then we have our release arm, which is this thing right here. It's a handle you pull on whenever you're um, ready to unhook the trailer, and it has the safety latch right here, okay? It is in the locked position. Then we come on up here to the front, and there's this curly Q line right here. This is an air line, and it's securely mounted, not cracked, broken, worn, afraid, not leaking. And back in here is an air cylinder. It's clear back in there. You just need to say my air line and cylinder are. Securely mounted, not cracked or broken, no missing nuts and bolts. The line is not cracked, broken, worn, afraid, not leaking. Now this visible part of the trailer is called the apron, okay? We want to make sure it's secure, it's not cracked or broken, there's no unauthorized welds. Now we've worked our way back to the front of the vehicle, front of the trailer, and we're going to go in here, and we're going to do our glad hands. They are securely mounted, they're locked in the lock position. Now, <clears throat> inside these glad hands are rubber grommets, okay? Pause. Pause. I'm going to show you this because you need to know it. You do not have to do this for the DOT. But Kelly's going to help me here. And he's going to undo this airline. Turn it up to a 90 degree angle and pull it off. We're going to inspect these rubber grommets. Here, hold that. We're going to inspect this rubber grommet right here. We want to make sure it's not cracked. This one's beginning to show some wear. We want to look at it on both the glad hand and the receptor. If you can see that chunk right there that's missing. This one needs to be replaced. This can cause an air leak. This is how you detect air leaks. Okay, this is one of the ways. All right, and then we, when we hook it back up, we start at a 90 degree angle. We line up the receptor and, and the glad hand. No, you're not lined up there. There it is. Okay, there we go. There we go. And we lock it back in place, okay? Now the DOT will not require you to do that. We just did it today for demonstration purposes. So now we're going to be at the front of the trailer, and we're going to do the air and electric lines at the front of the trailer with our glad hands. They are securely mounted, not cracked, broken, no missing nuts or bolts, they're not leaking, the rubber grommets are in place, the electric line is securely plugged in, and this is latched over the little notch right there. Okay? Now, if you get the coupling system, alone. The coupling system, sometimes the DOT divides their test into sections. You will always do the coupling system. So, at this point of the coupling system, you also have to talk about the air and electric lines back at the back of the tractor. Okay? Not tangled, not dangling, not cracked, broken, worn, or frayed, not leaking, and no bare wires on the electric line. Okay? Now we're going to move to the front of the trailer. The front of the trailer itself. Now this is actually a header board but you can just touch it and say front of trailer, okay? Securely mounted, not cracked or broken, there's no bulges and no missing rivets, all right? Now we're gonna look up. We're gonna do the lights and reflectors. The lights at the front of my trailer are securely mounted, not cracked or broken, they're amber in color. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna look right down the frame. At this point, I'm looking right down the frame of this trailer. I wanna make sure it's not bent, not cracked or broken, and there's no missing rivets right here. 
I'm also going to look at the DOT tape. I want to make sure there's DOT tape down at least 50% of my trailer. It is red and white in color. Okay? So now we're hitting the trailer. So we're going to look at the side of the trailer as we're walking all the way down. We're checking for bulges, for missing rivets, for panels that are coming loose, all kinds of things. And we're back here at the landing gear. Okay? This is our landing gear. Some people call them dollies. That's just fine. Okay? The landing gear is securely mounted, not cracked, broken, no missing nuts or bolts. These are sand shoes or feet. Some people call it a foot. It's okay. It's a sand shoe. It's securely mounted, not cracked, or broken. There's no debris that could fly off. No rocks or anything. Excuse me. <laughs> There's nothing, no debris that could fly off and hit anything like rocks or dirt or anything like that. We're checking our to make sure that the, the uh, Landing gear itself is securely mounted and no missing nuts or bolts. This is your crank handle. It's what you dolly your trailer up and down with. We'll get into that in a little bit. It is securely mounted, no missing nuts or bolts, and it is secured in its cradle. Okay? As you're going down here, you're going to be checking these cross members on the bottom of the trailer. Okay? You got to make sure they're all there. There's no missing nuts or bolts. There's no unauthorized welds. You're also checking down the side of your trailer as you're moving, but here's the light. I said don't walk past the light without talking about it. This is a marker light, securely mounted, not cracked, broken amber in color. And we're going to continue walking down here, and we're going to come to this thing here. This is our spare tire rack. It is securely mounted, not cracked, broken, no missing nuts or bolts, and it has a safety chain to secure a tire if we have a flat tire and need to bring it back. So as we continue, we're going to keep looking at the cross members. Then we're going to come to this airline right here. Okay? This airline is securely mounted, not cracked, broken, worn, and frayed, not leaking, and at least 18 inches off the ground. Okay? Keep on coming. We're at our sliding rail now. This is just like the sliding rail on the fifth wheel. Same purpose. Okay? Not cracked, broken, no missing, no to bolts, no one off by the well. The locking pins are in the lock position. You might need to know that there's four locking pins, two on each side, and they have to be in the lock position. This is our release arm. This is how we pop the locking pins and we pull up on this, and it unlocks the locking pins so we can slide these cannons and distribute our weight properly. Okay? Tanks and airlines underneath the trail. Okay? This is the beginning of your brake system. Our airline, securely mounted, not cracked, broken, water freight, not leaking. Our air tank is securely mounted, not cracked, broken, no missing nuts or bolts, not leaking. Okay, now we're going to go to the brake hoses. They run into the brake chamber. This is just like on the tractor. We told you there's five parts. The air hose, not cracked, broken, water freight, not leaking. The brake chamber, securely mounted, not cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, not dented, not leaking. The slack adjuster in behind the brake chamber is the slack adjuster. With the push rod and cotter pin, securely mounted, not cracked or broken, no missing parts or pieces. And also no more than one inch pull with the brakes released. Now we come to the brake drum inside the tire. The brake drum is securely mounted, not cracked or broken, no welds or free of debris in the brake shoes. Not cracked or broken, no missing pieces, not less than one quarter inch on the pad. Also free of debris such as oil or grease. Okay? Now we're going to do right to the suspension. We're going to do the swing arm, mounts, and bushings. That's this whole big, big square section right here. Okay? It's securely mounted, not cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, no unauthorized welds. The U-bolts, they should be back in the back. There you go. The U-bolts are securely mounted, not cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts. Um, bolts are secured on this one. They're on the top. Okay? It reverses it. Then we have a shock absorber. There's a little shock absorber right underneath there. If you look over here, see it crosses yeah, yeah. the shock absorber. Right there. Okay? Same thing, securely mounted, not cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, not leaking. We have our airbags. They're back in behind. They're securely mounted, not cracked or broken, no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, and they are not leaking. Now we're ready to do the wheels and rims. We're finishing, uh, we're doing the uh, turtle wheel assembly. The inner wheel seal is not leaking. The rims, both inner and outer rims. Okay, now you got to Tires. You want to do the um, inner and outer of both tires. 
No abrasions, bulges, or cuts on the side walls. The treads worn evenly, not less than two 30 seconds inch tread depth. Remember, two tires, two 30 seconds. I forgot inflation on the other tires. They're inflated 95 to 105 PSI. Your inner wheel, inner space is free of debris. We're going to keep coming right on out here. Our outer hub seal, securely mounted, not cracked or broken, not leaking. Reval stems. Not cracked or broken. The outer hub seal is also filled to the proper level. You can see in there and make sure it's filled. The valve stems are securely mounted, not cracked or broken. They are tight and the valve caps are in place. Uh, the lug nuts are securely mounted. There's none missing. All are tight. There's no rust that would indicate a loose nut and no bare threads. Now, at this point, because I realized I forgot to say my inflation on the front tires, I can go back up and do that, okay? The DOT will allow you to do that a couple of times. But if you do it too many times, then they will um, think that you really don't know your pre-trip. But in order to do that, I must walk all the way back up here, and I must physically touch and say my inflation. Okay? So my inflation on these tires, 95 to 105 PSI. My inflation on my steer tires, 95 to 105 PSI. Okay? Now I have to go back. All I've accomplished in doing that is burning time. Okay? So you don't want to do it too many times because you do have to physically go back up and do it. Alright? Now I'm going to say that I would inspect this axle if it's okay with the examiner. You always ask permission. They, they have the guns and badges. They win. I mean, I would inspect this axle the same as that one. Okay? Now we're going to proceed right on down the side of the trailer, still checking the side and everything, and you see this little thing right here. This is a door tie. It's a little hook in there that you tie your door open with. It has to be there. It's secure and it's present. We're going to do our mud flap. Securely mounted, now cracked broken, no missing nuts or bolts. No more than six inches off the ground. Here again we have lights. You don't have to specify, you just have to know that they're there, they're securely mounted. ABS light is amber, marker light is red. In the back of the vehicle, everything is red with plus. The back of the trailer. We have completed everything back here, and we're ready to go back here and do the door and the back of the trailer area. We're looking at our doors, top to bottom. We want to make sure there's no damage, no bulges, of course. We want to make sure our hinges are securely mounted, not cracked, broken, no missing nuts or bolts, that they're not cracked. We want to make sure our doors are securely latched, and this little thing is here so that you can secure your load. You can put a padlock or something on here to keep your doors more secure. Now we're going to do the, the door ties. These are what goes in when you open the doors. These are what goes in the side over here. Okay, and now we're going to do the lights at the back of our trailer. We do not have to do them individually. We can say the lights at the back of my trailer are red in color. These serve four functions. They are four-way flashers, turn signals, brake lights, and tail lights or running lights. Okay? These are called DOT lights. Do not look down here and say clearance lights. Clearance lights will be up there. Okay? So just say lights at the back of my trailer. Then don't forget to do your tag light. The tag light is securely mounted now it's to broken and clear in color. Alright? So we've done our full pre-trip and we're back here. Now we're going to tell the examiner that I would do this side of my combination vehicle. Be sure you say combination vehicle. If you do not say combination vehicle, you will fail whichever section you did not say. If you say trailer, you will fail the whole tractor. This is a combination vehicle. I'm going to do this side of my combination vehicle the same as that side. Okay? Now, at this point, we're ready to transition to the end cap section, but first we have to do a light check. You have to make sure all the lights are working. So you ask the examiner, would you please stand back here where you can see my brake lights. Those are the only lights the examiner will check for you. So you want the examiner to stand where they can see your brake lights on both the trailer and the tractor. When you're doing your light check, don't forget you've got lights on the back of your tractor. Okay? If you want to pause that, we'll get ready to do we don't need. So at this point, we're going to, the examiner is going to stay back there, and we're going to go up and to, the, to the truck, and we're going to shut the hood and latch it, because we would have left it open. We're going to get in the truck, we're going to turn on the switch, just turn the switch to the on position, 
You don't need to start the truck at this point. Turn the switch on. It's just a big heat. All right, he's gonna turn the switch on. Then he's gonna flip on all of his lights. Flip the light switch. Now you're gonna put on your high beams and you're gonna pull on your four-way flashers, okay? Now you're ready to get outside the truck and do your light check, okay? Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry, wait a minute, I forgot. The, you need to push, you need to shut the door and push on the brake pedal so the examiner can check your brake lights. Remember the examiner's standing back here and they're gonna be doing your brake lights for you. That's good, okay? And they'll let you know if they're working or not. Just push the they'll nod to you. Don't forget to look in the mirror. Do not sit in there with the door open and look back at the examiner. You shut the door and you look in the mirror. Okay? They will look for you. They will help you. All right. Now, at this point, we get out of the truck. We're going to go to the front of the truck. And we're going to check our headlights and four-way flashers. And we're going to say, working. Uh, there you go. Working. High beams are working. Flashers are working. Flashers and you're going to follow Micah around this truck. You're going to follow Micah around this truck. Flashes are working. Flashes are working on the tractor. Yep. Yep. Okay. We're gonna keep on going. Flashes are working on trailer. Marker light working on trailer. Flashers working on trailer. DOT lights working on trailer. Bell light. Bell light. Mm -hmm. Marker. Marker light working on trailer. Lasher working on trailer. Four-way flasher working on tractor. Now we're going to get back in the track and we're going to turn on a turn signal. We're turning on the left turn signal. And we're going to dim our lights. Dim okay. the lights. Very good. Get back out of the truck. Turn the aerial. When you activate the signal. When you activate, OK, go. I'm sorry. When you activate the turn signal, it automatically cancels out the flashers on a truck, OK? Left turn signal on tractor working, low beam working on the tractor. Last turn signal working on the track. Left turn signal working on the track. Left turn signal working on trailer. Left turn signal working on trailer. Now we have to go up and put on our other turn signal, and we have to check down the other side. Okay? Remember, we're on a time schedule here. So when you're actually doing this, you're going to be doing it much faster than this because this is eating up your time. But it's a vital and important part. Right turn signal is on. <laughs> right turn signal. Working on tractor, low beam working on right side of the tractor. Turn signal working on tractor. Right turn signal on tractor working. Turn, right turn signal on trailer working. Right turn signal on trailer. Working. All right, now, you're back here and you would tell the examiner, at this point, Mr. or Mrs. Examiner, I am ready to get in the truck and do the end cab portion of my pre-trip inspection. I entered the truck properly, three points contact. Um, first thing I'm going to do is put on my seat belt. My seat belt is securely mounted, not cracked, broken, worn, or frayed latches and adjust properly okay the next thing I'm gonna do is check and make sure I'm in neutral I'm gonna do what's called a safety start you must push in the clutch never start a vehicle without pushing in the clutch okay we're gonna turn the key on 
and we're going to wait for the gauges. I can't turn the wheel yet. See how the gauges are jumping around. We're going to start the truck. Hold the key until it starts. All right. I'm going to check neutral again. I'm going to ease off the clutch because I want to make sure I'm in neutral. Now, in case you hadn't noticed when we were outside, we had the wheel turned. So we're going to straighten the wheel back out. Okay? So we can see all of our gauges and everything. All right? When I started this truck, and when I started again, I'll point it out again, the ABS light came on and went off. That's something we want to indicate to the examiner. Okay? Now I'm going to do, make sure I have my air pressure, which I do. It's building up. It's right at 100 PSI. Okay? These are our air gauges. I want to look at those and make sure it's built up. There it is. Now I'm going to do what we call a tug test. I'm going to put this vehicle in first gear. The first thing I'm going to tug on is my trailer. So I'm going to push in my tractor button. Okay? And I'm going to pull against ease out on the clutch till I just feel a little tug. Listen to the motor. There it is. Okay? That's all you need. Now I'm going to check my tractor brake. So I'm going to push in on my trailer air supply. Okay? It doesn't matter which order you do these in as long as you do it. Okay? So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to let out just a little bit till I feel my clutch engage. There it is. All right? That's all we need. Now the next thing we do is called a service brake check. Your service brake is your brake pedal in the truck. And what we have to do is make sure that this vehicle will stop properly without pulling from one side to the other. All right? At the DOT test site, you should get up to about five miles an hour. So I'm going to try to, to do that for you here. I don't have as much room here as they do. So we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll pull this up, let the clutch out, first gear, let the clutch all the way out. You don't need the gas pedal for this. Well, a little bit. Give it a little bit of fuel. Okay? And then we're going to come to a stop. And we're going to make sure that this wheel does not pull one way or the other. All right, now at this point, keep your hands on the wheel. Do not touch the shifter, do not touch the buttons, just shut the truck off. Let it die completely. Now, the only thing that's holding us in place is the gear, which it will. But you must have these buttons in in order to lose the air to do the four-step brake check. But in order to do that, I have to turn the switch back on. Here's the ABS lights come on for both the tractor and the trailer. That's good, that means they're working. I have my air pressure, which I need. Just turn the switch on. The gauges will not work without the switch on. The main thing is don't put this back in neutral. Just leave it in gear. Don't even touch it. All right? So the first thing I have to do is hold my foot really hard on the brake pedal for 60 seconds to make sure that I do not lose more than 4 PSI of air pressure in 60 seconds. This is our application gauge. You want to keep that gauge up around 60 pounds. Okay, you want to hold it really hard and you will need to time for a full 60 seconds. You can use a watch, you can use a cell phone, you can count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, etc. Okay, the main thing is the examiner will be watching these gauges for air loss and this gauge to make sure you are applying properly. If you let up, you see you lose air. So you hold that down, once you push on it, you hold it. Okay, for a full 60 seconds. Pause. Yes, ma'am. We've made sure that we're not losing more than 4 PSI in 60 seconds. Okay? Next thing we're going to do is we're, we're going to fan the brakes until the light and buzzer activate. That's our low pressure warning system. And it will activate at not less than 60 PSI. So we want to watch our air gauges and we want to push hard on the brake pedal. We want to get big gulps of air. Okay? See, there's our can you see that? There's our air, low air pressure warning. You see the light and you hear the buzzer, okay? The next thing we want to do is keep fanning the brakes until these buttons pop out, which will be at 20 to 40 PSI. And if you will just push really hard on the brake pedal, you'll get a good big gulp of air. Some people go like this and they get nothing, okay? So just keep pushing really hard, watching your gauge drop. I see that the tractor gauge is dropping a little bit quicker. It's okay. And we're waiting for these buttons to pop, which they will do when the air pressure gets down there. You just have to keep pumping. Sometimes it has to go all the way down. Okay? 
Then went the red one. There's the yellow one. Whoops. Okay? So our buttons have popped out. You feel the brakes. Everything's working properly. Now we have no air. So what do we have to do? We have to restart the truck. Once again, safety start. Clutch in. Back to neutral with our shifter. Turn the key on. Okay? Now, at this point, we're building our air pressure. So we tell the examiner that my air pressure is now building. When it gets to 60 PSI, the light and buzzer will cancel out. While I'm waiting on that air pressure to build, I'm going to do my end cab inspection. Complete it. So, I'm going to look at my windows and mirrors. Be sure your graphic, you can do windows and mirrors all at the same time. They're not cracked, they're not broken. The windows are clean and the mirrors are clean. There's no obstructions, no unauthorized stickers. Okay? And my mirrors are both adjusted for me. I'm going to use this little adjuster right here on the side. We are very fortunate nowadays that we have power mirrors just like in your cars. It's wonderful. Okay? Then we're going to go to the dash area. We're going to look at our oil gauge. It's coming up. It's at the proper operating range. The water pressure is coming up to the proper operating range. And the voltmeter is working properly, reading between 12 and 14. That's all we're concerned with right now is these three gauges plus the air pressure. Okay? Now I'm going to do my indicator bar right here. This is where my left turn signal, my right turn signal, and my high beams are. Be sure you turn your lights on. And my high beams and my four-way flashers. They're all working properly. We've already checked the outside, so all we're concerned about is this. Okay? Now I'm going to come down here since I'm doing lights, and I'm going to do the panel light right here. It's not very visible in the daytime, but you want to flip it, and you can see that it's working. Then I'm going to come right on over here to my heater and defroster. Turn this right around where the heater and defroster is. Turn it on, and you're going to say defroster and heater are working properly. Now my hand is going to hit the shifter, okay? You see I'm working in a circle. My shifter is not in a bind. That means it moves freely. My clutch has no more than two inches of play. My steering wheel has no more than two inches of play. I have a fully charged, at least a 10BC fire extinguisher here. And underneath in my side box, I have three red reflective triangles. And I have the proper fuses for this vehicle, okay? My air has reached the 60 PSI. And the light and buzzer has canceled out, and it's still building, okay? So... The next thing, the last thing I want to do is haunt my city horn and my air horn. Okay? This concludes the pre-trip inspection of my combination vehicle. The end. Continuously about these two little levers right here. And if you'll read right here, it says fifth wheel slide. Remember I showed you the locking pins on the fifth wheel, and you can move that fifth wheel back and forth to adjust your weight. This unlocks and locks the pins on the fifth wheel, those the locking pins so that you can slide the fifth wheel. This is your inner axle differential, okay? When you're driving, only one of the drive axle works. But if you get stuck or you're in snow or mud, you might need um, uh, both axles to work. I call it a, it's, it's a power divider is what it is. The pause attraction on a car, okay? So, but you want to be careful with this. You do not want to uh, lock it in while you're in motion or while you're shifting gears. You want to be at a stop, lock it in, and then when you stop, lock it back out. Um, years ago, it was recommended do not go over 25 miles an hour with that locked in. Now, I don't know what the new rules are, honestly, but it's a good rule to go by. Be very careful with this one, both of them, actually, because if you have this unlocked, your pins on your fifth wheel are going to be in, and your fifth wheel could go sliding back on you. Okay? And that's what these two buttons are. What we have here now is we have Micah, and he's going to demonstrate proper entry and exit of the vehicle. We have to do a three-point contact. So go ahead, Micah. He's going to open the door, and we're going to, he's going to step up hanging on to the handrail and the door. Get up in the cab. Okay? And sit down in the seat and close it. All right. And then he's going to exit the truck properly. Okay. And you're going to get out of the truck just like that. Three points of contact. Good job. This is Micah York 
I want to thank these guys that are helping me today. Uh, this is Micah York. He is going to work for Will Trans. He is a CDL holder, and he's passed everything he needs to. He's going to orientation next week. And these two young men, this is uh, Craig Anderson. He's our cameraman today, <laughs> and we appreciate you, Craig. Thank you very much. He is a new student. He is going to have a CDL in three weeks. He's going to go to work for Conway Trucking, right? Correct. Conway Truckload. And this is Kevin Poulin. Kevin is my arms and legs, <laughs> as you can tell. He has really been a big help to us today. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Kelly. Oh, my God, we're going to have to edit that out. Kevin's good. This Kevin's is good. Kelly. <laughs> Kelly Poulin. I am so sorry. This is Kelly. Once again, he has been helping us out today. When I couldn't reach something, he helped me with it. So thank you so much. I so much appreciate everybody's help today. Micah is going to help us by showing us part of our agility test today. He's going to show us how to open the doors. To open the trailer doors, you want to move that little flap thing up. You want to lift up and then make pull out. You have a latch at the bottom and a latch at the top. You want to make sure they're both unlatched. And then when you open the door, Micah, you want to latch that back in, and then he's going to run the door tie. Remember I told you about the door ties. All right, very good. Now, when you enter this trailer, you want to use three points of contact also. All right? The hand on the floor, the step, and then knee and up. Very good, very good. And then to come back out, exit the truck. Do not jump off the back of the trailer. You will land on something and hurt your foot, okay? And now he's going to close the door back up. And what you have to do is make sure both the bottom and the top latches get latched. Well, you can't see shit. Get latched properly, okay? Latch the top and the bottom. Put it back in, and then put your little flap down. All righty? Thank you, Micah. Right. Um, what we're going to do, are we you going, are we rolling, okay, what we're going to do is the uncoupling. We're going to unhook this tra tractor from this trailer. So the first thing we have to do is support our load, okay? We have to dolly the landing gear down to the ground. And so Mike is going to do that, he's kind enough to help us. Now this is a two-speed landing gear, okay? It has two gears. So, yeah. It's kind of in between, I think, you got to lock it in better. There we go. Okay. In is high gear. So you can see the landing gear going down. Now he's turning the handle properly. Some people stand with one finger and go like this. You'll do that until you get smacked in the face the first time. And then you won't do it anymore. Okay. You dolly it down. And the way you know when your load is fully supported, there's a way you know that. You're going to... Let the landing gear hit the ground. Okay, you're in high gear doing this. So now, you're going to pull out and you're going to crank a couple extra times until you hear the air leaking out of the airbag. So give it a couple cranks and get up in there where you can hear it. And it should start leaking at any time. You hear that hissing? That's not us. Bundle. Maybe you there can it goes. Do it right there it goes. Okay. Do you hear that air leaking? That tells you that now the weight of this trailer is all on the landing gear. Do you hear it? Okay. All right. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up here and we're going to pull the release arm. That's going to open those locking jaws. You have to push back on the little red flap and lift up on the bar and pull it in. And then lift up and lock it in position. Alright? Now, you want to get under here and you want to look and make sure that your locking jaws have opened. Okay? And locking jaws are open. If you look up in there. Look up in there and the locking jaws. You'll see that the locking open. jaws are open. Okay. Alright. All right. So then you come back out. Very good. You come back out. Now it's time. To unhook the airlines. You're going to unhook the airlines and you're going to stow the airlines in the dummy coupler. The dummy coupler is right here on the back of the fairing. Okay? You always, if you have a dummy coupler, you're going to stow the airlines properly. If you don't have a dummy coupler, you need to um, hook the airlines together and then 
hang them down so that moisture can't get in them. There's an electrical coupler. It's this round thing right here. You just stick it right in there. Out of one. Okay? All right. Now, we're going to get off the track catwalk properly. We're going to step backwards down off the catwalk. Okay. Now, at this point, Mike is going to get back in the truck. He's going to do a safety start. And he's going to pull the tractor ahead. And I'm going to tell him when to stop. Educational, so I wanted to do it. Now, this king, this is your king pen right here that hangs down from the bottom of the trailer. Okay, the greasy area around there is called the upper fifth wheel. Okay, that's your upper fifth wheel where all the grease is. Now, the reason it's greasy is because it's attached to the lower fifth wheel or the skid plate. You see, and we always want to make sure we have proper grease on there. For example, oh, don't touch. That. For example, this this one could use a little more grease. You see, there's some dry spots on there. It's okay, but we know that we need this grease in order for our vehicle to turn efficiently. Okay? All right. Now, down in here is your stabilizer bars. You have two stabilizer bars, one in the rear, up oh, right there, that big bar, yes. And then I've, there's one up here underneath. There it is. Okay? These are the stabilizer bars that you do in your pre-trip. Okay? You can't, like I said, it, it's really hard to see them when you're trying to do it with a trailer. But you just want to point in under there and say your stabilizer bars are securely mounted, not cracked, broken, or bent. No missing nuts or bolts. Okay? Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to talk about. I can't think of anything at this time. Any questions from you guys? Do you have any questions or comments? Okay? You can also get a good shot of the drive shaft down here. Remember I was talking about the drive shaft? which is hard to see. I believe this drive shaft is three sections. So there's one back here, there's one up here, and then there's one in the very front. You don't need to know that, it's just for your educational purposes. When you're doing your pre-trip, it's just my drive shaft, okay? All righty. Now, are we ready to hook this vehicle back up? We're gonna get Micah to help us again. Thank you, Micah. Okay, now what Micah's gonna do is Micah is gonna back up and so the front of this trailer is just over this fifth wheel. So get in your head when you're in the truck. That's the front of your trailer. You're looking down the sides. You want to make sure your drive tires are lined up with your trailer tires. That's how you know that you're lined up with the vehicle. Pick something on your vehicle that will not move for a reference point. Tires are going to be there no matter what. Okay? So now Mike is going to start the truck back up. It gets a little noisy and he's going to start the truck back up. And he's going to back up until the front of this trailer is right about here. He's not going to hook it yet.
with our safety latch in place, okay? And we want to get underneath here, and we want to make sure that the locking jars are securely latched around the king pen. This is where we're at. We have Locking no jaws are securely around the king pen. We have no space between the upper and lower fifth wheel plates, okay? Now we're ready to dolly our trailer back up. We've tugged on it, we've hooked it, we've checked it. There's at least two to three checks you should do. Okay. We're going to crank the landing gear back up and stow the, the crank handle back in the crate. It makes a difference if you have it higher or low. Yes. There we go. Woo. Okay. And we thank you. That's complete pre-trip. It's entering and exiting the vehicles. It's coupling and uncoupling. Anything else, guys? All right. Thank you. What I want to show you here is these two guys, how good they're working together. Yeah, each is, axle has one. One is explaining each axle to the other. Run independently. And, and it's, it's very so good. Well, you can work to together on a pre-trip. Please work together. So it takes one per axle and push rod to be able to be strong enough. Because inside all here is a bunch of springs. That's what activates the bit. Okay. And it, you couldn't have, I mean, it, it, it takes too much to, to stop it for if you had more than one trying this to work is it. Kelly it's Kelly and Micah York. Micah has the stick. And usually if, usually if they go wrong, this is where you'll start having trouble. Like diesel, diesel starts seizing up in there or whatever. You know, 
usually where you'll them. have trouble. If they're not engaging, it'll always be this push rod. But that's because the balances in here quit working to allow the push rods to go in and out. That's why, it's like this one's a new one. And what's the name of that again? That's a brake chamber. Brake chamber. Okay. And, and the slack adjuster. And this is the slack adjuster. Okay. okay. Your slack adjuster. This is your push rod. This is your slack adjuster. This is your pin and the cotter pin. Cotter pin that the DOT is talking about. Very good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay.